guys, welcome back to my channel. It's K the PA. Now, don't mind me, okay? Um, my lighting is completely off, and I just don't have time to sit there and try and play with the the lighting. So I'm just gonna do the video right here in my bathroom, okay? <laughs> so this week, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to get quality sleep working on the night shift. Last week, we talked about the dangers of working um the night shift and you know different um like diseases that you're more susceptible to and also you're more susceptible to sleep pattern disturbance so i'm going to talk about a couple of ways that you can ensure that you get quality sleep working on the night shift okay so stay tuned all right guys so i had to get my sister's painting in the back but um, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is to create the environment of darkness. Okay, so you're going to want to create nighttime even though it's sunny outside and the sun's out. Um, and the best way to do that is to buy blackout curtains. Um, you have the choice of buying them or you could do it the getaway like me and create your own. Um, and these curtains basically block out all sunlight. So you can um, actually get a good night's rest um, during the day. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that. And um, you could either choose to go to like Amazon or Walmart. And I think they're around $13. But you could just, you know, work with what you got like me. And you can create your own. So I'll show you how I did it. And um, you can decide if you want to do it the ghetto way or just be a normal person. <laughs> okay. So in order to create um, your blackout curtains, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need tape and you're going to need push pins. You know, this, these were all items that I already had, had in my home, so um, I didn't have to buy anything. And you're going to also need a blanket. So not a really, like, big blanket, but if you have, like, a small blanket that... Um, that's like lightweight that would work um i got mine off american airlines <laughs> so um so i just basically use everything um in my home and also if you don't have a blanket you can actually use foil paper and put foil paper on your window but i know if you live at certain apartment complexes they don't really want you to put foil paper on the window so you know be careful with that but if you put foil paper on the window, that works wonders, okay? And it also blocks the sunlight from coming out, coming in the room, and it cools your room down. It's kind of like an insulator. So those are the items that you're going to need. Um, it's probably stuff that you already own. You know, I'm just trying to save you guys some money, okay? <laughs> so this is the getaway of doing it. If you want to be like a normal person, then you can go to Amazon or Walmart, Target, wherever, and get normal blackout curtains. And I think those start around like $13, $14. Um, but if you want to be cheap and ghetto like me, <laughs> you can just create your own, okay? And I'll show you what mine look like in just a second. So I'm going to show you my ghetto version of blackout curtains, okay? And this is just something that I created, you know? I thought this would be better and cheaper than me buying curtains. I mean, I could buy blackout curtains, but I mean, I'd rather waste my money on other things. Um, so I'm going to show you guys my curtains and please, like, don't make fun of me, okay? Like, I'll turn my comments off. <laughs> this is my ghetto version of a blackout curtain, okay? So I put... Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I also use tape. So you could put tape up here and then you put your push pins here. So you just put it all around. And then um, some people actually put foil paper like on the glass on the window itself. But I don't want to put it on there because it looks kind of weird. Um, but some people just actually just put the foil paper on the window and it actually will stick to it. So, um, yeah, this is the ghetto version of a blackout curtain, and it makes the room really dark. So even if there's, like, a little bit of 
um, like there's like a tiny little space here. Um, it still makes the room really dark and it works for me. Okay, don't judge me. So you're going to also want your room to be like extremely, extremely cold. Okay, because when, when it's really cold, that induces sleep. So make sure that your room is like around 69, 70 degrees. For me, I leave it at 72 because if I put it at um, 69, 70, I'm just going to freeze and I'm going to be very uncomfortable. So um, just put it at a, a temperature where you're comfortable, but you're also like freezing um, and you, you have to like get onto your blanket and um, it'll just like make you sleep like a baby. So my next tip is probably going to be like the hardest for most people since we're like addicted to electronics. Um, but you have to turn off your cell phone. Okay, you have to turn off your cell phone, turn off your tablet, um, anything that any electronic that's going to emit light, you want to make sure you turn it off because there's actually a study that said that um, electronics emit a blue wavelength of light and that's not really good for sleep so you want to make sure you turn that off and if you really do have to have like some kind of light they said um red um get like a red bulb like a, a night light that has like a red bulb because the red wavelength is really good for sleep okay so um just turn the electronics off you don't really need it for a couple of hours um, and if you're like me, like I just, I don't completely turn my phone off, but what I do, I put it on the floor and I put it on do not disturb. So basically what happens is that, um, if someone on my contact list calls me once, I think it doesn't like ring or, you know, it doesn't vibrate or anything, but if they call me multiple times, then my phone rings. Um, and that's because like I don't want anything to happen and then like my phone is off or whatever. Um, so I just put it on do not disturb and I just set it up or if they call multiple times then I know okay maybe something's going on and I need to get the phone. But other than that like just leave your phone you know on the floor or put it on your nightstand. And it's not good to sleep with your phone next to you anyways because I heard about it like um, emitting um, radiation and you could like um, it could really be uh, car a carcinogen I guess um, it could cause cancer you know I'm, I'm very wary of cancer um, but just be careful with just having your phone next to you, you um, people have become like electrocuted from having their phone um, right next to them and having it like on the charger so just make sure that you know it's on your nightstand or it's on the floor um, because really it's not that deep like just disconnect and just like enjoy like just a couple of hours of sleep one thing that I try to do um, to make sure that I get good sleep is to um, stay up during the day and then try and force myself to sleep at night. So on my days off, I try and, you know, go outside to get more sun, you know, get that vitamin D up. And then um, at night, I try to sleep because sometimes I'm tempted to sleep during the day because, you know, your body gets acclimated to working at night and you just want to, you know, be up all night and sleep during the day. But I try to like break myself of that habit. Um, when I have my days off and I try to just stay up and do things during the day and then um, get some sleep at night. Okay, so one other thing that you can do is actually wear a mask when you sleep. I personally find it scary wearing a mask because I'm like, okay, if something's happening, uh, I have a mask on my face. You know, I can't really be quick and, you know... I'm just a little paranoid when it comes to darkness because <laughs> I want to, if anything happens, I want to like see what's going on. Um, but if you're into that, you can wear a mask and that's just going to like create even more darkness for you. Guys, so those are case tips for inducing sleep and getting quality sleep working on the night shift. Okay. Um... And I'll, I'll have a more professional setting um, for my next video. 
But I just wanted to make this video really quick um, because sometimes I'm not in the mood to make videos. So when I'm in the mood, I just go ahead and get it done. Um, but hopefully those tips are helpful. You know, it's very important to get quality sleep. And, you know, it, it just does so much for your body. It rejuvenates your whole body, like your cells. And, you know, just everything works better when you get good sleep. So make sure... Um, that you're just creating ways that you can get sleep, you know, like go lock the kids in a room or something um, Just just joking <laughs> But um, just do whatever you have to do to make sure you get some good sleep Okay, and be considerate of people that work at night if you don't work at night be considerate of people that work the night shift because people expect us to just be up and doing stuff during the day when we just got off work and it's like it's really tiring it's like a different feeling working the night shift um like when you work during the day you can go grocery shopping and do all this other stuff after work but when you work at night it's like your body's like a different kind of tired so just be considerate of those people that you that's in your family you know your friends that work the night shift Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful and I'll see you guys on the next video. Just comment below and tell me like if you have any more tips um, so other people can see it and it could be helpful to them also. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye. Every single day.